on YouTube or Facebook. We're rolling? Yes, okay, hi everybody. Welcome back to our weekly live stream. My name is Alicia, and in this week's lesson, we're talking about food. We're talking about food this week. So food, this week I'm going to use this diagram behind me I made uh, to explain kind of some leveled up adjectives. So how to go past, how to go beyond like good or uh, sweet, for example. So I want to kind of give some deeper adjectives and then I'm going to use this uh, sort of um, spectrum over here to talk about expressing your hunger. So how do you express like your level of hunger? We're also going to talk a little bit in review about your preferences, I like, I don't like, and we'll talk about giving recommendations. So today will be lots of vocabulary and expressions that I hope you can use right away. So as you join, please send a message in the chat to let us know you're there. Please hit the like and share button. We appreciate it as always. We will begin in about two minutes. There's a lot to talk about today. Okay, I see lots of you in the YouTube chat. Hi, everyone. Uh, hello. Let's see, there's Yuri and Leah. Yes, uh, I am really live right now. We are really live right now. Uh, Fernanda, hi from Brazil. Emnix, hi. Klaus, hello. I just saw you write something in the chat. Um, Charlie, you're new. Hi, welcome. Okay, Harry, hello. Ethio, hello. You are not in Argentina right now. Uh, Lucia from Mexico, hello. Hi, Fernando. Great, lots of you in YouTube. On Facebook, Facebook is up. Great, hi everyone on Facebook. Uh, Vantha, hello. Caesar, hello. Robinson, hi. Flavio, hello. Rafa, hello. Margaret, hello. Huh, I can't keep up. And someone writing in Thai. I cannot read Thai. Very sorry, but hello. I assume it says hello. Great. Wow, we have lots of people watching. That's exciting. I, too, am going to go to Facebook and share this. Wow, look at all those people watching. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Let's get going. Uh, if you missed my introduction, today's live stream is about food. It's about food. So I'm going to begin maybe over here with some review points while everyone joins us. Um, as I said, yeah, please don't forget to like and share the video and make sure to uh, send example sentences throughout today's live lesson. And if you have questions, please feel free to send your questions in the chat also. I will try to catch them uh, if they're about today's lesson. Uh, if not, uh, if you're not watching live, please feel free to send uh, some questions anyway. Uh, I'll check the lesson uh, after the live lesson. I'll check the chat and I'll try to answer your questions somehow. For now though, let's begin. I want to start, as I said, on this side of the board. Um, I think I want to start kind of with these two points, these two points here. The first part for today's lesson will be very review focused. So your preferences, your preferences. This means what do you like? What do you dislike? What do you hate? So let's review kind of a basic uh, pattern for foods that you like. Uh, for foods you like, you can use I like your food or I love a food. The difference between like and love is just the level, really. So I like is a little less strong than I love. When you want to explain something you do not like, just use don't like, I don't like. You can use hate, you can use hate, but just be careful if you use hate with, um, for example, a specific, like a person's favorite food, it might seem a little bit offensive. So you can say, I don't like or I hate. Another one that you can use here is, I'm, I'll include this, I'm not, a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of something is kind of a softer way that you can express uh, when you don't like certain foods. So I have here two food. I like or I love food. You can use in this part um, an adjective like I love sweet food or I love spicy food or I hate spicy food. Here, you can also use the name of a country's cuisine as well. So, I like Thai food, or I like Japanese food, or I don't like Indian food, for example. So, you can use a type of food, you can use a cuisine, 
you can use the name of a food. I love curry, or I don't like rice, maybe. So you can use a lot of different things in this pattern. This is a very basic way to explain your likes and your dislikes here. So with this, uh, then I do want to go to this part, this experience part, it's a little hidden there, sorry. Uh, we'll talk about this, and then I'll go on to this diagram I made here. So here, your experience. Um, this is one point I hope many of you uh, remember from today's lesson, this experience point. What I mean by experience, uh, first, this is a question. Uh, have you ever had or have you ever tried a food? So again, this can be a country's food, a type of food, a specific dish name. Have you ever had Thai food? Have you ever had sushi? Have you ever had spicy food? So this one, I want you to remember this one because I hear lots of learners use uh, the expression, do you know? Do you know? Like, do you know sushi, for example? But the question, do you know, is a bit different from have you ever had, or have you ever tried, or have you ever eaten that dish? So this is a more natural question. Have you ever had curry, for example? That's a better question than do you know. Um, it communicates more. So when you answer this question, this have you ever had, just give a yes or no. Can you guys see that? So I'm just going to write yes, really big, or no. This is the most natural way to do this. So just answer yes, I have, or no, I haven't for an experience question. Um, if you say no, you can say no, I haven't, but I want to, if it's applicable, if that works for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, this is. I hope one big point for many of you to take away, to use from today's lesson. Have you ever had this food? Have you ever tried something? Um, so yeah, send a, few, send a few example sentences. Have you ever had sushi? <laughs> sushi. Uh, good, okay. I'll check the chat. I don't see any examples yet. So, oh, someone wrote, I don't never eat Mexican food. You don't need to put don't and never together because they're both negatives. So I never eat Mexican food, okay? Or I don't eat Mexican food, okay? So don't put those two negatives together there. Okay, uh, yeah, try to send your examples there uh, and I will check them out. Yeah, I don't like Ethiopian food, good. Okay, so let's continue on then to this diagram here that I made. Um, it's a little small, but I think we can zoom in because we have the technology, can we? If not, that's okay. I will read things many times in a very clear manner. <laughs> okay, um, so I made this diagram. I want to continue on from talking about your preferences. So what do you like? Yeah, that should be good, I think. Um, so from what do you like? There are, this is kind of a small cooking lesson, I suppose, too, a food lesson. <clears throat> From preferences, the things you like and dislike, there are five basic ways to talk about flavors. There are only five, five categories of, of like food of flavor. These are them. So the first one here is salty, salty. So you can see salty has that salt as the root, yeah? This is the adjective form. A food that is salty has a strong salt flavor. Another one, bitter, bitter. The spelling is B-I-T-T-E-R. Maybe if you make your video big, you can see this a little better. So bitter, bitter. So something uh, that is bitter, for example, if you drink uh, beer, beer is often very bitter, that, uh, that kind of, um, like taste on the back of your tongue often is a very bitter taste. Or like if you've had a burned sugar, that's very bitter, very bitter. So bitter is another very, uh, is one of the five basic flavors. The next one is sour, sour, S-O-U-R. Sour is the next basic flavor. Um, sour things, uh, we often have like sour candies, at least in the U.S. Um, so maybe like lemons are a great example of sour food. It's like a really strong taste um, that for some people can be very uncomfortable. So a sour food or sour flavor. 
Uh, next one is sweet. Sweet, so sweet things. These are things that have that like natural sugary taste. So lots of fruits have a sweet taste. So maybe apples are sweet, for example. Uh, and then the final one here is umami. This is a word that comes from Japanese. Uh, umami, umami is like depth of flavor. It's something that's like rich. So it has a lot of body to it. So I want to start with these five basic vocabulary words. These are kind of the five basic ways to express flavor. Um, in cooking, you can use these in cooking as well, but you can use them to talk a little bit about your preferences. So, to go back to this pattern we talked about, you could say, I love salty food, or I don't like bitter food, or I hate sour food, or I love sweet food. So, this one is a little different though, umami. We don't use umami. Uh, so much as an adjective, we use it more as a noun. Like, I love food with lots of umami is a good way to express that. So um, if you don't feel comfortable, if you want to use something that's like, um, I guess a little bit similar to umami, you could use the word rich, rich. I'll talk about this a little bit later. We use this a lot for desserts, actually. Okay, so with these five basic flavors, uh, if you missed it, don't worry, this video is being recorded. Uh, I want to kind of go more uh, in detail with these things then. So around um, this diagram, I have a few other vocabulary words. Let's start up here. So up here, I have these two words, spicy and hot, spicy and hot. We use both spicy and hot to mean um, something that's like it makes your mouth feel like it's burning kind of but not because of temperature it's not a temperature problem this is a food that has like uh, peppers in it it's uh, so if you're from a culture that has lots of spicy food you probably know but in cultures maybe like in Japanese food culture for example spicy or hot food is not so common so spicy, S-P-I-C-Y, and hot are both used to describe that feeling in English. So here, hot does not mean temperature. So if you're eating something and you say, oh, it's so spicy, that's a very accurate word, but you will hear native speakers use hot, like, oh, it's so hot. It doesn't always mean temperature. So if native speakers are confused, like, do you mean temperature or do you mean spicy? Uh, they just ask each other. So spicy and hot uh, are used to describe the same feeling. So I put them here, like, in kind of bitter, salt or salty territory, but um, you can kind of feel what spicy is for you. Uh, someone says, I hate spicy food. Oh, I like spicy food, actually. Um, good. Someone says, Peruvian food. Is Peruvian food spicy? Uh, someone says, spicy and hot. I love it. We have lots of spicy food fans in the chat. Huh? I like it, too. I ate spicy food yesterday. A little bit spicy. Some salsa. Mexican food. Okay. Onward. Let's go to the next part over here. The next kind of more detailed vocabulary word is tangy. Tangy. The spelling is T-A-N-G-Y. Tangy. So what is tangy? Tangy, I put it here between sour and bitter. Uh, this is not a perfect, it's not a rule. Uh, but it's here between sour and bitter because it's something that has, it can have like kind of a creamy feel often but there's some kind of like uh, sour or some kind of um, sharp taste to it. Like we really notice another flavor. Maybe it's herbs or maybe it's something sour, like I said. Good examples of tangy food. Uh, if you know like Greek yogurt, that's a great example. So it's really creamy, but there's also kind of this sour flavor to it. Um, so you might have like a, some, like a sauce, a really tangy sauce. Uh, that's a common way that we kind of experience tangy food. So tangy is another good one. Maybe you have some, something tangy in your food, uh, in your food culture. I'm very curious to know about uh, the foods uh, from where you guys are from. So if you have some examples, please send them in the chat. I'm checking. Lots of you like spicy food. Okay, lots of you like spicy food. Someone says, what is your name, teacher? My name is Alicia. <laughs> okay, uh, let's continue to the next one uh, for time reasons, 15 minutes in. 
I want to continue down to this next part of this diagram, um, kind of moving into the sour part here. So I have three words in this section here. They are tart, tart, T-A-R-T, -T, acidic, acidic, A-C-I-D-I-C, -I -I and fruity, which is kind of over here a little bit. Let's start with tart. So tart I have here in the sour part. So tart is something that's like lightly sour. So if you imagine a lemon is like maybe a very sour food, something that's not quite as strong as lemon is tart, actually. Maybe if you like cooking, if you like baking, you know a tart is a type of dessert. Uh, this is also an adjective that we can use to describe slightly sour food. It's often slightly sour and like slightly sweet. So it depends a little bit on the food. So tart, tart. You can use this to describe uh, desserts quite a lot. Um, so that's one that I want to talk about here. Next is this word acidic, acidic. Uh, so maybe some of you can see <coughs> acidic, the base word here for acidic is acid, yeah? Acid. So acid has, it can have that very kind of strong, like um, for example, like a vinegary taste almost. So maybe a salad dressing could be very acidic. Or again, to use the lemon or lime example, um, there's like a topping or some kind of um, liquid that gives a very strong acid, acidy taste, acidic taste to it. So acidic is how we describe that, acidic, acidic. Um, Juan in YouTube, mayo can be tangy. It could be, mayo can be tangy. Mayo is kind of creamy, mayo is short for mayonnaise. Um, when we say tangy, it's usually there's some kind of like herb or some other maybe acidic part added to it to create a more interesting um, flavor. Um, let's see, someone says, is Thai food spicy food? I think so, sometimes. It depends on the dish, it depends on the dish really. All right, let's move along, uh, time reasons. The next word here is fruity, fruity. I talked, or I talked, I put this between sour and sweet because fruity can be kind of both. So you can see here the root is fruit. So there are lots of different kinds of fruit, obviously. So some are more sour, so some are a bit sweeter. So just think about kind of which one um, you want to kind of communicate which feel. Is it like a sour fruity? So maybe like grapefruit, for example. Is it sweeter? So like berries or apples. So this is kind of in between these two words. Okay, um, I guess I'll continue on. Uh, yes, I'll finish up this diagram and then we'll take a quick break. I'm going too slowly. All right. Let's move on to sweet. I'll try to check your chat. Let's move on to sweet. I have these two words here, syrupy and sugary. Syrup, syrupy, syrup. <laughs> maybe you guys know uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup is probably the most uh, popular uh, syrup in North America, maple syrup, uh, commonly put on pancakes. So syrup is something that's uh, very sweet, yes? And it's kind of, it's like a liquid, it's like a really thick liquid. So syrupy can mean something that is sweet, yes, and it's kind of thick. So if you pour it, it's not like water, but it kind of takes a long time to come from like the bottle that you're using. So something is syrupy, syrupy. You could use syrupy to talk about a sauce, for example. Something that is syrupy. Maple syrup, yes. Uh, Giovanni says, can we use fruity to describe coffee? Sure, yeah, if you have a coffee that has fruity, fruity flavors, uh, you can do that for sure, no problem. Um, lemon is bitter, perhaps, yeah, like it depends a little bit on like which lemon you eat, but for some people you could get a, a bitter taste from lemon, sure. Today's lesson is about food, Lila, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get to the next part, sugary. So what's the difference between syrupy and sugary? Syrupy is like a it's, a, it's a texture thing. It's kind of, it's the quality. So we kind of visually, we see something is syrup-like, it's syrupy. Sugary is something that has a strong taste of sugar. So that means maybe it's not natural. 
So if you like um, eating like processed uh, candy, so you like candy bars, chocolate, that kind of thing, we might call that sugary. So it has kind of an unnatural sweet flavor. That's really sugary. Or if you're eating a dessert that's topped with sugar, you can call that sugary. It's something that uses a lot of sugar, processed sugar. Okay, onward. Uh, Leah says, are these natural tastes of natural foods or can be junk food as well? Yes, they can be junk food, absolutely. I'm going to finish with uh, junk food words, actually. Junk food is next. <laughs> okay, uh, we have just a couple more and then we'll take a break. Let's move on to this word, decadent, decadent. I've spoken about this in a lesson before. Decadent uh, is spelled D-E-C-A-D-E-N-T, decadent. So decadent is something, I have it here between sweet and umami. Uh, so decadent is something that's uh, often a dessert. Um, it's like, has like a high calorie, kind of like luxury, like really, really nice image about it. And it's often like um, kind of a, uh, like a chocolate cake style dessert. So something that's really, really strong in flavor, uh, lots of fat, maybe some sugary flavors as well. That's something that is decadent. So a great example, like my favorite cake, I make like this flourless chocolate cake. It is decadent. There's no flour. It's super rich. So I mentioned this word, rich. Rich is a great word you can use to talk about something with lots of umami or lots of body. You can use this uh, for desserts, you can use this to talk about anything that has a really deep flavor to it. It's a really, but keep in mind, it's like, um, it's something that's often used with desserts, maybe with like sauces, uh, perhaps um, with like um, maybe meat dishes from time to time if they're paired with a sauce. So something that has a lot of body to it. I keep using that word actually too, um, a lot of body. Something that has a lot of body. This is used for like wine and beer. So for example, red wines have, uh, well some, uh, if you're drinking a rich, a kind of richer, I guess you could say red wine, you could say it has a lot of body to it. Getting off track a little bit. Uh, so rich, rich can be used for desserts uh, and a lot for sauces. Okay. Um, ice cream is very decadent, says Michaela. Indeed, or gelato. Gelato is another example of something decadent. Oh, that sounds so good. Okay, let's finish and then we'll take a break. These last two here, these last two, right between salty and umami, are great words to talk about junk food, junk food. Savory is the first one, S-A-V-O-R-Y, savory. Something that is savory has this salty flavor, yes, and maybe it has this umami factor too. So it's something that maybe is kind of rich and kind of salty, something that is savory. We use savory to talk about like roast meats. We can use savory to talk about sauces, kind of saltier sauces. We don't use savory so much to talk about sweet things. Savory, savory. So like I had like a really savory uh, roast meat last night, that is true. All right, last word, then we'll take a break. Greasy, greasy. This is the last one. Greasy, G-R-E-A-S-Y, greasy. Greasy, you can see the root, grease, grease, grease or oil, in other words. So greasy food is like junk food. So food that uses a lot of oil, a lot of grease, maybe you can see the grease or the oil on a napkin when you're eating. So like hamburgers are greasy, pizza is greasy, burritos are greasy. Those are like all my favorite foods are greasy foods. So. You can use these kinds of words to talk about flavors that are kind of between salty and umami uh, and have this sort of uh, maybe sometimes junk foody uh, feel about them. Okay, so that is a lot of vocabulary to start with. So we can use all of these words in an expression like this. I like or I love that style food. So in my case, I love savory food. I love greasy food. Um, sometimes I love, I, I sometimes like tangy food, um, and I also like spicy food as well. Great. Yeah. So those are my favorites. Send your favorites. Someone says, I hate greasy food. Eh, really? 
I like it from time to time, but if I eat too much greasy food, I don't feel very good. I don't know about you guys. You like tacos? I also like tacos, Gabriel. I ate tacos last night. It was good. I was very happy with myself. <laughs> okay, other ones? No food. No nope. hot dogs at Yankee Stadium are greasy, are they? I have not had a hot dog at Yankee Stadium before. Where is my food here? Okay, we are going to take a quick break. I'm trying to find the thing that I'm looking for right now. Where's my food one? Uh, all right, I'll find it in here. Anyway, let's take a quick break. We have free stuff as always for you guys. So I want to introduce, since today's topic is food, I want to introduce the free thing that we have as always. This week, uh, I want to focus on our dining cheat sheet. So this is free, an example of one of the free things we have on the website. Here are, a, well, this is kind of a list of vocabulary words you can use at a restaurant. Today, I'm not talking about dish names. These are like the kinds of dishes, the courses you can order at a restaurant. Um, these are like restaurant-related vocabulary words. But the words I'm talking about today are words you can use to describe your preferences. So what do you want to eat? What kind of things do you like or dislike? So you can use that when you're asking for recommendations, which I'll talk about in a moment. You can use that to um, ask uh, wait staff. Uh, so that means the staff at restaurants for recommendations um, and to explain like your preferences as well. So check this out. This is a nice um, addition to today's lesson. You can find this uh, from the link below the video on YouTube and above the video on Facebook. Please check the description box. It's not in the chat box. So please go get this. It's for free from EnglishClass101.com. Okay, good. Fantastic. If you are just joining today's lesson, today we are talking about food. Food and uh, being hungry. So that's part two for today's lesson is talking about being hungry. How do you explain your level of hunger? We're going to talk about that next. So as you join, please don't forget to hit the like button and share the video as well. We always appreciate it. Many thanks. Okay, um, let's go to part two for today. Uh, I will try to check your questions again. So I am trying to check the chat. Uh, please feel free to send your example sentences and questions there. Let's move on. What to do with my marker? I hit it for myself. There it is. Okay. Let's move on to part two for today. Part two is over here. So uh, there are two parts in part two. Expressing hunger. Expressing hunger. So this means how do you explain your level of hungry, in other words. Uh, that's one. And I'm also going to review uh, giving recommendations. Giving and uh, explaining uh, recommendations and preferences. Okay. Uh, so let's start here. Express your hunger. Express your hunger. I made a spectrum. So this is, this is a spectrum. Uh, so we're going to go from one end of it to another end of it. Uh, and we're going to look at some expressions you can use at each level of hungry. So uh, if you have some ideas, I did not include everything on this list. If you have some ideas, send them in the chat and I will add them to the board for everybody to see. Let's start though. Let's start down at 0%. So at 0%, uh, you do not want to eat food. So reasons could be this expression, I'm full, I'm full. So this is I apostrophe M full, F-U-L-L. -L. I'm full means my stomach is full. So we use this after eating. So we cannot eat any more food. I'm full, I'm full. I don't want food, I am not hungry. So no, 0%. You can use this, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. I've put this kind of down here uh, because maybe you could eat, I don't know, um, but it's maybe not always 0%. I'm not hungry, again, I'm. This is one point uh, I notice many learners miss. I'm, not I, but I'm, I'm. I'm not hungry, I'm full. This is the second one here. So maybe like 10%, 20% or so. I'm not hungry. Moving along, up here, maybe 50% or so, 30%, I don't know. 
Uh, this expression. So this is something I use actually. Uh, it is I could go for a snack. I could go for a snack. In native level speech, I could go for a snack. I could go for a snack. So what is this could go for? Could go for. Could go for is like saying I kind of want. I kind of want. I have a little bit of a feeling for this thing. I could go for a snack. It's like I could eat a little bit. I'm not hungry. I'm not really hungry because this is like a 50% or so expression. But I could. I could have something. I could go for a snack. Um, moving along, let's see. Some of you are already writing I'm super hungry. <laughs> we'll get there in a second. Uh, the next one here is this one. I'm a little hungry. So maybe about 60%, 70% or so. I'm a little hungry. A little hungry. So maybe you can guess to level this up a little bit more. You just remove a little. Just I'm hungry. I'm hungry is a quick and clear way to express it. I'm hungry or I'm a little hungry to level the, level it down. Finally, up here at 100%. I have a couple expressions. Some of you already wrote, I'm super hungry. Uh, there are these two, I'm so hungry. I use this one a lot, I'm so hungry. And this one, I'm starving, I'm starving. This is a, like, this is an exaggeration. An exaggeration means a word that makes it sound uh, more um, like bigger than it actually is. It's an, an exaggeration. You're starving means you are dying because you're so hungry. So of course, in most cases, we are not actually dying, but we want to communicate that strong level of hunger. I'm starving, I'm starving. So this is a quick introduction to expressions you can use. Oh my gosh, we're two minutes late. I had no idea. Wow, I have to stop talking. Okay, uh, good. So that's a quick spectrum. Oh, someone asked, what is a snack? Uh, a snack, snack is a small food. Small food, it's not a meal, small food. So if you like junk food, like potato chips, or uh, I love potato chips. <laughs> potato chips are like crackers. If you're a healthy person, maybe you eat fruit for a snack, so it's not a full meal. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish quickly. I didn't realize how much time I spent talking today. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's go to, we'll finish then quickly with these two lines about like recommendations uh, and like gi giving recommendations and asking for recommendations. So when you want to make a plan with a friend, you can use one of these two like to ask for a recommendation or to ask for an opinion. What do you feel like eating? What do you feel like eating? This feel like means what do you want to eat? What do you feel like eating? You can answer this with a one word answer. Thai is fine. Japanese, pizza, burritos. I don't care. You can use that as well. I don't care or anything. So that's a quick way to ask for someone's like a recommendation or an opinion. What do you feel like eating? What do you feel like eating? Last for today, this one. I use this a lot. It's easy, it's friendly. What sounds good or what sounds good to you? What sounds good? What sounds good? Answer something, Thai sounds good or a pizza sounds good, curry sounds good. Very quick and easy, friendly. I like to use that one a lot, okay. But I'm out of time. I talk too much again. So I will finish there for today. I will check the chat uh, in, from today's lesson and try to answer that. Someone wrote just now, is it weird to use I'm starving uh, in a day? No, you can use I'm starving. It just sounds like you're really, really, really hungry. Uh, it's common though. It's common to use that. Um, but I'll finish there for today. Uh, please send other questions if you have them in the chat. I will try to catch them. Uh, especially, It's especially easy for me to check YouTube as well. So uh, please, please send anything you have there. But I have to finish. Sorry. Uh, so we'll end there for today. But uh, we'll be back next week as always. Of course, uh, next week's topic is going to be shopping shopping in English. Uh, uh, do we have a text to you yep. here? Ooh, we'll see. Ah, hi. <laughs>
again. Um, so October, thanks. October 24th uh, is our next lesson. Next week, Wednesday, October 24th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't remember, just set a notification on Facebook or on YouTube and you will get an announcement when we begin our live stream. So please join us. I'll be talking about shopping and shopping related expressions. That will be next week, Wednesday. In the meantime, don't forget to get your free stuff. We have lots of free stuff. I showed you this one, the food one, uh, a little bit earlier. There is also a cooking, uh, a cooking PDF in here too. So if you like food, if you're interested in this point I talked about earlier, you can check that out for some more vocabulary and expressions that you can use. Okay, so I'll finish there for today. Thank you, as always, for sending your questions, for liking and sharing and everything. Uh, we really appreciate it. So have a great day. Have a great night. Enjoy your week, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Okay, okay, okay.